What is happening, people of the world? Welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey and Weight Show with me, your host, Tommy Mack, aka the Late Skin Legend. And today, again, we have just a straight whiskey episode because, as everyone knows, Tyrone has some business to take care of this weekend. He's taking on Lewis Crocker in the Battle of Belfast live at the SSC Arena. So he's getting his head in the game. He has some all, like, what do you call it, press obligations and all of them something. So he won't be here today, but we are joined by a very, very special guest today. The man sitting to my left is the WBO Global Champion, 19-0, just coming off the highest viewed boxing event of the year. It's like two point something million. That's who it is. This man is walking in the footsteps of legendary family members. He's a Eubank, Harlem Eubank. Welcome to the show. What's happening? One introduction. One introduction. Was, uh, special. I'm going to have to get you at the fight now. So. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm available. Why does everyone get me up? Put the book in it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on to it. Yeah, he's good at the monikers as well, yeah. man. He's like, isn't that stall off a cuff? He's uh, underappreciated. Dude. Exactly. <laughs> you know, let somebody had to say it. I'm glad. I'm glad it was you. But Harlem, for anyone who doesn't know you, if they just, of course, everyone's seen you. When was it? two weeks ago? About three, three, three weeks ago. Now, yeah. So, how many million was it? It was, I think, two point uh, two. Two point two mil. He's all seen Harlem picking up the table, and then. He's actually going viral with Uncle Chrissy because <laughs> you better watch out, dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's things changed for you since um the big, your big uh, fight? Um, nothing much has changed. I'm doing the same thing. You know, I'm uh, getting back into training and um, looking at looking at the next steps. Um, yeah, nothing nothing much has changed from an inside perspective. Mm. It's all about just um, moving forward one step at a time, and you know we're we're happy with the performance, and still still things to um, go back to and, and improve on, you know, charging towards world honors. Yeah, that was a great performance. It really was. Um, and Uncle Chrissy is you know guiding you somewhat. Uh, what's it like having um, the legend that is Chris Eubank Senior? on board i know he's obviously been on board yeah. as a family member but yeah. like fully on board yeah it's great he's always been there to kind of you know give me advice and steer me in the right direction but to have him kind of by my side and fully involved in the team now um he had so much wisdom um and experience you know you've got someone right next to you that's been there done it you know took the punches and and um felt felt being in there at, at a high level yeah. um so there's there's that wisdom right next to you and um it's great to have that yeah is there is there pressure being a eubank because because uh, you know everyone's expecting you to be like as good as your uncle and as your, your cousin too yeah definitely um i feel like boxing is one of the most high pressure sports regardless you're going yeah. in there to an arena packed with with people you know um people that want to see you fail and people that want to see you win mm. um and you're on stage in front of someone that's coming to try and take your head off yeah um so it's i feel great. like it's a high pressure sport um as it is and um the more you can learn to wield that pressure the better you're gonna be so you know i feel like i've just added a heap of pressure <laughs> now to to um to live up to that legacy yeah and Does, um, i'm looking forward to doing it does uncle chris put pressure on you a wee bit like listen don't be letting me down because boy i was the world champion and yeah you have to follow in my footsteps <laughs> oh sorry sorry my That's mother's, mother's tongue. tongue um <laughs> but does he does he <laughs> does, does he put that pressure on? yeah it's time dreadlocks you have a fight you have a stop run dreadlocks you can't run no more Oh, sorry, that was my mother's tongue. Uh. Sometimes it slips out. Um, I mean, it's it's unspoken. Yeah, uh, you pressure. can just feel it. Like. Yeah, it's it's um, uh, it's presence. It's, yeah. Um, you know, it's something that he would never say, but something that you feel. It's it's there. And just the it's way he looks at you, and yeah, this, yeah like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, now. <laughs> and do you have any siblings? 
Yeah, I've got a younger sister and and uh, older brother. Are any of them in the boxing game? Uh, my brother, he's he, he didn't really well. He hasn't really had the the focus. He's more kind of like ADHD and and um, got into more fights on the street oh, okay. than, than he did in the gym. Red, but yeah. he's he's taken it up more recently, and maybe he can. Uh, I think he'd be good on maybe some of the misfits. To be honest, yeah. he hasn't he hasn't really uh, spent years doing it, so mm. he's he's really a beginner, but. Is, uh, is he on excited. like the influencer scene or is no, it, no not yet not yet but but he has the name or yeah he has the name and, or... and the uh you know exciting kind of style he's a big uh kind of heavyweight that looks a little bit like tyson and, and tries to throw punches yeah so in that manner so it, yeah. exciting style um yeah maybe i think the the um misfits route might be a, a good thing because he's just kind of starting out and yeah could be could be something for the future. What about your sister? She she's uh traveling, so she's actually based in uh, Australia right now. So right. um, yeah, everyone's kind of doing their own thing, and you know I've I've been uh had my head in the gym for the last yeah. eleven years. So that that's even more pressure like of out of the U Max, and like your section. Yeah, you're only one boxing, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, let me can't let us down. Hey, it's uh, yeah, I think. We just kind of, I got to a certain age where it was, it wasn't something that I tried to get into. It was something that kind of found me. Yeah. I never thought I'm going to get into boxing. I'm going to be a boxer. That was never on my to-do list mm. um, until I got to 18, uh, walked into the gym. And from that day on, you know, I needed to try and um, advance in the pugilism yeah what what, yeah. what made you go to the gym then at 18 i uh, i played football for brown hove albion and i had always from the age of 11 to 16 i like committed my life to that so i trained two three times a week yeah. play football on a sunday so where you know friends and your, your school years are, are kind of years where you learn a lot about yourself mm. you grow up that's a lot of your kind of character is built off your your secondary school kind of yeah. so you would have called him the footballer yes yeah, so i was the footballer i was you know when you go to your school you, you're playing for a professional club so everyone, yeah. you know everyone's like ah you know i want uh you play for brian you know you, yeah everyone's gassed about it so yeah, you're yeah. excited about it too and i was um training two three times a week and um and then playing on a on a Saturday, so where everyone would go out on a Friday night, you drink. Were yeah, yeah, I was just you know pure focus. And what, what about Saturday and after the matches? I mean, nothing went down on a yeah. Saturday. It was always Friday night yeah. as kids because everyone goes out after school, so they meet at the pier mm. and uh, drinking or whatever. And that was never for me. I always had that focus. So um, got released at the age of sixteen from the club. And um, did they give you a reason or just? They actually said. Because uh, I didn't have my growth spurt until I was 18. Oh, so God so finally got it, pubes this yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was the... You didn't <laughs> tell him about the pubes, <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, um, yeah, no, it was... Uh, it was the physicality. It was the time yeah. in football where everything was about physicality. And especially over here in England, it was about strong... You're you know, seeing Belfast at the minute. men up top. Say again. You're actually in Belfast at the moment, but yeah, you said yeah. over here uh, in England. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> over in but, England, over here. <laughs> football was not football was not huge. No, no, huge but it's the, it's the same. I would say like the Irish league is obviously mm. nothing to compare to the to the English Premiership and even mm. you know Championship and that. But um, it is all about physicality yeah. in the in the Irish league too. Yeah, is it? Yeah. So I, th I feel like over here in Belfast. Um, and Ireland as a whole, like fans, like people really get behind boxing and fighting mm. the way that uh, the English other people, people do with football. Do with yeah, football. yeah. <clears throat> so here, like the 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 boxing fans, you know, really really get behind their fighters, yeah. and, and um, people just love fighting over here. So they're really yeah, get behind. And, and you know, like especially because uh, you're good friends with Michael Conlon mm. and. Uh, and Jamie Conlon too. So the people who you would get introduced to and when you come here to watch him fight, mm. you will be with the Conlons and they will bring you around West Belfast and mm. you're meeting people from West Belfast. So in West Belfast is a very, you know, it's a very working class area, poor, mm. poor lower working class. 
and there's boxing clubs in every estate, mm. at least two. So to get the respect and I don't know, uh, obviously you're a Eubank, so you you didn't, well, did you come up rough? Come uh, up I just part? came up working class. You came yeah. up, well, fuck's sake, Uncle Chrissy did <laughs> <a> come <couple> up quick. <laughs> Everybody eats. <laughs> no, but you know, coming up in, um, you know, the poor uh, neighborhoods, yeah. Do you get respect for being able to fight? So the guys who fight on the street and probably like your brother gets respected, like they know this and he can go. But then the guys who fight in the gym and they're winning championships, mm. that's just a different next level respect. respect. So yeah. everybody wants to have that security. Yeah. So they all, you know, admire fighters and get behind them. Mm. And, then, and then when people go on to the, to the big leagues, the likes of Mago or Tyrone or even mm. myself, you know, they uh, yeah. everyone does get behind them, yeah, and it's, it's great. And then football, in 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 the uh, other sense, you know, like the Irish League, if you get to the top of the Irish League, it, it's still like it's not Premiership, you know. If you, mm. if you play for, you get abused. You get abused. <laughs> You're standing it because what will happen if you play Irish League is you go into the pizza shop and there's somebody are like. You fucking joy such and such. They're like, what's a fucking crack? You messed up one at the weekend, you stupid cunt. So that's it. Whereas, like, <laughs> if you get to the top of the boxing game, yeah. coming from like the, our working class backgrounds, yeah, you can be, you can be, you know, it's what everyone wants to achieve. World. As, yeah. as kids, where as a lot of you know kids in England want to be, you ask them what they want to be as it's a football. Yeah. 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 Over here, it's probably more. I want to be a fighter. I want to be yeah. a boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's more. It's cause it's a, like attainable. People can see people from their mm -hmm. area. They've made it. They've well. Everyone assumes boxers are millionaires. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Very few of them are. Mm -hmm. But they think they're living the lifestyle that is possible because they came from the same place as I am. Yeah. Same at the same school, same boxing club. Whereas the top footballers who's coming out of Belfast, you know. It's the right few and far mm. between. Yeah. So that was your thing then? You were wanting to play for Brighton? Yeah, I, wanted, and and I, felt, I felt like boxing had already been a achieved. It had already been conquered. So yeah. I'd be like, why would I start that, that when it's, yeah, it's already been done? Yeah. Let me try this football thing. So I took to football. Uh, my first year playing, I, I went it to Brighton and they scouted me from a, a local team in my first year. So kind of got into it quite quick. And then... Um, it was obviously the school years when football was like the prominent thing as mm. well and um then got released at 16 and everything kind of my whole world kind of came crumbling yeah. down because that's all i knew really did I was you gonna... struggle like they get through that period because um, 16 is a transition yeah i think too. yeah i think i i didn't really know from them what mm. what what i wanted to do um so there was a kind of a few years where i w went to college and um was still playing football but I'd lost the kind of passion for it. Yeah. And um, at 18, like I said to a few of my friends, we played for like a, a college academy. Um, so it's like a, a good... Shit. They used to play with the big boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would give them a ball and yeah. we were fucking up. <laughs> call them going mad. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so we go into college, we train uh, for a few hours, like 9 a.m. train, then you go and do your um, studying. Yeah. So I do that and then the second year I was kind of like... Uh, I'm I'm done with football. Yeah. I didn't want didn't want to play no more. I was like I'm just gonna do the study. Was it because everyone was shit? Was that getting nah, you going? It, it wasn't even that. It was just like <laughs> fuck's sake. You know when it's all you know when something's exciting. You mm. enjoy playing. You enjoy that the kind of flair of, of it, and you know you're passionate about yeah. it. Yeah, and lost I just lost. It? Yeah. I just completely lost that. And um, I I always need an outlet. I've always needed something to put my energy and time into. Um, since being a little kid. Mm. Um, so. I was like, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try this boxing thing, and went went to the gym for the first time, and I went down at 18, so yeah, I'm sparring, yeah. I'm sparring and grown men from the from the jump, yeah. getting punched in the face, and thinking, you know, how do I get, ah, how, do, ah, <laughs> how do I get right in the fucking nose, uh, yeah. you fucking nutcase? Like my last name is Eubank, and you know I'm taking wax to the to the face. And but, put, they probably was putting it on you more because you are Eubank. Oh, that's Eubank. Come yeah, that's that's, that's the whole thing you get yeah. from the jump. You don't know how to fight, and whoever you're, you know, whoever you're up against, who's been training for years, is about to spar Eubank. Yeah. So, you know, trying to make a name for themselves. Some, let me get yeah. some, some brownie points here. 
Am I right uh, in think, thinking that you were doing martial arts though? But, or yeah. was... So from seven to 11, before I started football, okay. I was into martial arts. So I loved Bruce Lee and I'd watch Jackie Chan, Van Damme films yeah. on repeat. Um, so it kind of like going it back into boxing was like, let me, you know, let me go back into combat yeah. because this, this is what I, this was this my real was, passion. Yeah, like, yeah. like um, from the what jumps. What were you doing? Karate, uh, karate or, yeah, yeah, karate, Wadaroo. Um, it's like a self defense. Wadaroo. <laughs> Deliveroo. <Self-defense. laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some. Uh, uh, and then they just stunts. <laughs> <laughs> Start going in the spa, yeah. harm stunt like. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck's he doing? <laughs> yeah. Start that on the uh, ring walk. You sure? You sure? Bluff. You sure? <laughs> you sure work? Like the fucking the gay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what Might the have fuck's going on with this shit? <laughs> Um, did you go for any grading or anything? Yeah, I was a black belt. Were you? Yeah, black belt. So I done it for four years, seven to eleven. Got my junior back black belt when I was uh, eleven because I wanted to stop. Like the, the belts is traditional karate, so you have to do like the cards and stuff. Mm. I just like the kumite, which is the fighting the competitions yeah. where you're actually on the mats doing the uh, like the the fights. So uh, I, by the age I was like ten, I was like at like three belts away from black, I was like, I'm done with this. Like, I'm, I'm bored of it. And, this uh, is crazy Harlem. You're losing heart all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you got the black belt and you're just like, com- <laughs> you're like completed it. Miss. I like the fighting, but it was just like, <laughs> the, the protocol is just like, it, you have to wait a certain amount of time to like grade and stuff, okay. even if you know the, yeah. the, know yeah, the stuff. Yeah. So it's like, I was just tired of the protocol and, and uh, but I was so close. They were just like, you know, just, do it for another year, get your black belt. So I done that, got mm. the black belt, won uh, two British titles in the um, in the Kumite at the British Championships um, twice consecutive mm. years, and uh, the World Championship started at you had to be twelve to enter. So um, I was like a year away from entering the world. Yeah. It's kind of like, and actually in the second year of the British Championships, I got called over by um, <laughs> a dude called. Um, master suzuki um and he was like the um uh the one who invented the motorbike yeah he was like <laughs> <laughs> he was the um i've had a brain block from the karate kid but yeah. he, he was that guy the the sensei? The sensei. he was the sensei yeah so um he called me over and he doesn't talk like to anyone like the Chinese? yeah uh japanese japanese yeah. so he doesn't talk um to anyone but everyone knows he's like he's done like dvds and stuff for like black belt thing yeah. like like in, in terms of i think he was like seven eighth dan, nine, <laughs> nine, nine, dan. i thought you're gonna say he was fit sound like fit <laughs> like knock off dvds <laughs> he's the guy you go to <laughs> yeah, like some some mad tutorials <laughs> <laughs> um, so he was uh, i think ninth dan so the dance is once you reach black yeah, belt go on like, the yeah. so it takes years to get uh, to get to like each Dan is like, I don't know, five, six, like it takes yeah. years. It's like prestige in Call yeah. of Duty. So he was like ninth Dan, Fairly so he was lovely. like the master of that style. And, and he uh, he called me over after the fight and was like, uh, I want you to enter the world championships. And uh, I was like, um, you know, Fuck's I'm not sick, I can't be wavered on the fucking. I don't even want to do karate anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck six, is it? Just like, give me a chance. I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not old enough. I'd have to wait like another year. Da, 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 da. I spoke to my coach and. That was the end, that was the end of that, but it was just that was kind of a significant moment. In yeah, my, that you actually look, got spotted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can look back on. So, um, came away from that, stopped karate, took up football, and then obviously that straight into secondary school, and everyone's you know gassed about football. Yeah, um, went to Brighton in my first year playing, and then you know that's the thing where it's like, oh, you know, you're playing for Brighton. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal when you're a kid. Um, of course. So, um, yeah, kind of just, I've always had my energy in something uh, fully. Mm. Like, I've always fully committed to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, throughout my life. And then, when I stopped playing football, I was like, you know, I need something to to dedicate yeah, myself to, to yeah. again. And and then I found boxing and it was the hardest thing that I'd ever done. I was like, let me, let me try uh get better at this. <laughs> I can't be taking wax and taking licks off. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> off people in the gym no And I couldn't imagine like starting at 18 and taking them kind of boots. Like I yeah. remember when I st- I started just when I went in the, f- the first year of secondary school and um, just 
You know Anthony Kikati? Mm. Is Kikati you're with? Uh, no, he's lighter, but yeah. I know him. Yeah. So he was like the top dog in the gym when I joined. And um, he could punch so hard mm. and the spicy when we were kids. So uh, my coach, Patsy, put me in the spar room. I, I, had, I didn't even have a fight. <laughs> and he was nice, no champion. So he's meant to be just taking me around. But he just started fucking spattering me. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And then I could just remember. He was uppercutting me and I was just like, Doof. everything in slow motion. I was like, that's a rookie, bro. And then I was like so close to crying. And I was like, if I crack, and then we'll show my <laughs> face in this gym again. And then he stepped back. I was like, you all right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. <laughs> but I wasn't all right. I was yeah. like, yes, <laughs> I was in a world of hurt. You have to learn firsthand. So as an 18 year old, you're taking big boy yeah, punches yeah. again. Does he yeah. ever feel like crying? No, I just I just wanted to get better. Yeah. I just had a desire like to actually, you know, be able yeah. to handle myself yeah. in that situation. See, cause like karate, cause you start doing it from so young. Yeah. Does he ever feel like muscle memory kicking in from all those years? Yeah. Ago to throw a kick. Yeah, I felt it was Especially much. Especially somebody who's busting me up like, yeah, take it, what's all? <laughs> Roundhouse. Think, yeah, I think football had stiffened me up enough. For me not to have the flexibility yeah. to whip round a little uh, little roundhouse yes. round, round the side, but <laughs> it's um, I always found it more difficult because the stance is different. Uh, you're like on your toes, like back and forth because obviously there's kicks and stuff like that. So I found it more difficult than someone that's just starting fresh mm. boxing. You plant your feet, you know this is how you move because you have to untrain years of, of programming. Yeah. Um, so I definitely found that transition uh, harder yeah. to pick up like the basics. Do you think any of the stuff that you took from karate have you incorporated in your box instead? Um, no. Maybe, maybe from the stuff <laughs> I watch, like, because I, I love martial arts. So like the stuff I watch in terms of like Bruce Lee from yeah. Jackie Chan, like these, like the Van Damme, mm -hmm. like that. Lan Lennox Lewis said that's what he, watched. he used to watch before fights. Yeah. Kung yeah. Fu films because then he found like yeah I feel like that's it. if that's like if that's what inspired you to get into it it's like mm. it gives you that uh, it gives you that kind of purpose and, and motivation when you watch it it brings back their memories yeah um, and I feel like that's that's nice I've done that a lot before the last fight um, I was watching No Retreat No Surrender that yeah. Van Damme film um, and uh, it brought back the memories of kind of why I got into combat in the yeah, first place. Yeah, yeah. When you you see it in the movies, when you're walking past, when they're walking past the dojo, you see that see it and and you walk in, and yeah. that's the end. And that's a, a that's lot you. how it was for me. So, um, yeah, nice. No, it's it's I, I think that that's imprinted on you and how you perform mm. um, without even realizing. To yeah, yeah. So. Going into the gym at 18, how long was it before you entered the championship? Or did you even box amateur or did you just go yeah. straight pro? No, I boxed amateur for four years, but I always wanted to go pro. I never yeah. felt like the amateurs was set up for me. Um, I always watched uh, pro fights and, and fighters with like, I was watching like Roy Jones Jr., yeah. um, Floyd Mayweather and... and I, uh, Prince Nassim Hamid, my uncle, like I was watching fighters that had that flair and mm. a different kind of style about them, which was impossible to do in the amateurs. Because yeah. you try and practice something like that in the amateurs. Yeah, you're gonna go 10 nil down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, there's. I remember one time in the amateurs, I was walking backwards around the ring, just uh, nothing flashy, yeah. just kind of a little bit of movement. And uh, the ref pulled me and was like, uh, I don't care who your family is. <laughs> he fucking you, man. It's always <laughs> fucking there. <laughs> you're like, fucking boxing, yeah. man. <laughs> you're like, I don't care who your family is. Move like that again, I'll disqualify you. Jesus. It's like, so, if, you know, from them hit them kind of moments, you just, it kind of demotivates yeah. you. And yeah. Like, did you, did you have, to... like, a thing to think almost, because, obviously, Uncle Chrissy was, like, marmot. Mm. So, did you have people who were haters? Like, just being prejudiced towards you, but they, definitely. You, obviously, you you're not like you have a different personality from them, but they're just going fuck easy you back, and then they're just gonna be like. It's it's one banner. Like you take 
you take the positive from it and you take the negative from mm. it. It's, uh, you know, you, your name's Eubank. You people have already decided what they yeah. want, what they want from you, and and how they feel about you. Yeah. Um. So um. Yeah. You you learn to kind of accept that for what it is, and you know you don't really have you know much. Yeah. And then so f- did you do any championships or did yeah, you just I tried do? Yeah. I basically so in my head I was like you know I want to turn professional. Let me get as like experience in the amateurs. Um. But I want to turn pro as, as soon as possible. I'm 18. You know, I've started late. So every year I try to get as many fights as possible. Mm. Uh, I think the first year I had <clears throat> maybe like eight fights. The The next year I went in the championships. I went in the under 10 championships on two fights just to, yeah, to get just experience. Get, yeah. That same, uh, uh, the same, then I had uh, 10 fights that year. Went in the under 10s again. Went on a good run in that. Um, and that season I had like 14 fights. Um, the same year I went in the under 10s, I went in the under 20s. So I like, I was just trying to- Yeah, just rack them up. fast track. Yeah. Uh, and then in the same year, the next year I went in the under 20s, I went in the open class as well. So I just went in loads, but mainly for experience. I knew yeah. I wasn't in a, a good position to win the whole tournament. Yeah, you just wanted to get the fights yeah, and just get, get the, the fights, get yeah. experience. After each year, I was like, you know, speaking to the manager gym, think I can turn pro now. But after each fight, I was asking if I could turn pro, like I wanted to turn pro. Just fucking do it. Yeah. Fuck's sake, Carl. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah. You had yeah. one fight, yeah. calm down. Literally. So I was, I already had my mind set on, yeah. on what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. I was using the amateurs for experience. You know, I, my, my style wasn't suited to it and yeah. I wanted to develop a professional style. Was, did you box in the gym um, that Chris boxed in? Yeah. Yeah, is so, that an amateur gym too? Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, an amateur gym uh, down in Brighton. And um, yeah, so that's the gym that they uh, they all used. Yeah. And, and uh, senior What's his name again? The well. coach? Uh, so there's a few different coaches down there. Um, the one who pro- trained um, senior? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Ronnie Davies. Yeah. yeah. So Ronnie, yeah, so Ronnie was... Uh, was he there when you ran in? I, yeah, I trained with uh, not as, not as an amateur. It was more because the, well, yeah. the amateur. Uh, yeah, it's too like, different. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he was always around, and I'd go and do sessions with him during the day times and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, he was always uh, like a part of the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so you turned pro in. What was the um, process? Did you turn pro with them at the start, or did you turn pro with because you were with, formerly with um, Booth? So I turned pro uh, on my own actually. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So I turned pro um, on my own for my debut um, actually down in Brighton. I wasn't with anyone. I trained myself for the fight. What is um, it you, Bank? So sick. <laughs> Chris Junior as well. There's only totally no cut. Yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think the opportunity was there. I was in a position where I hadn't confirmed a lot of things, yeah. but I just needed to fight. I wanted to fight and. So what are you doing? Like, just like training on your own in yeah, I, like I, Club Lang. <laughs> <laughs> I went on a few different training trips. I went to um, Vegas when I, a, a little bit previously and then uh, Cuba to try and get experience. Yeah. And came back from Cuba and then like a fight was put to me for like three, four weeks time. Yeah. Um, and it was in Brighton on the seafront. So um, I was like, yeah, let me just... Uh, get this debut out of the way um, so I can kind of announce myself yeah. on the, on the pro goal. scene. Um, yeah, it was good. Sold a load of tickets and um, had kind of like my first local one that you know a few friends could come out to and, yeah. and watch you have your debut and make your way into the pro ranks. Um, so yeah, stopped my guy, done the, pulled out the backflip after. And, Did he? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, I'm fucking yeah, you, ranks. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, kind of stepped into the pro ranks in that fashion. And then, um, yeah, kind of went into um, Adam's gym from there, you know. After so after met, your yeah, first so fit? I, yeah, so I met Adam obviously through, uh, through Chris previously and, and then ended up in in uh, his gym, sparring some of, his, some of his guys and, you know, in that setup after that. And, um, yeah, so... so now you know we're in a different gym and um, training with Charlie Beat, um, who's 
a great trainer and I've trained with him for, for many, many years um, as a pro, you know, from, yeah. from, when, when I, from when I kind of w first went up there, I was training with Charlie. So, um, yeah, we've been training together for a long time and uh, built a great kind of system and I've yeah. been continuously learning. And Are you guys um, training in Brighton still or... Uh, nah, training, London? training, uh, the same gym. So yeah. training, um, so you're still in training in that same yeah, gym. So it's, in, so it's up in, uh, yeah, it's up in Surrey. It's a great facility. Um, you know, it's uh, got a lot of great guys in. And have you met uh, Paul, uh, who's he's up in mixed team, and um, yeah, so he's created kind of a great facility for everyone to to train in. Where? So so no, that's yeah, good. So do you do much training with Junior? Uh, yeah, I've done quite a bit actually. I was uh, I've always trained trained with him throughout the years, and um, I trained with him quite a lot in the build up uh, for when he was gonna fight Connor. Um, so I was sparring him and and kind of helping him prepare for that fight. Um, so I trained with him a lot before that in the build up, and then uh, when he was out in Vegas. I've yeah, seen photos of you in the in the May right? Yeah, I wanted to um go out there and see see close up how he's preparing for that second one and as soon as I went out there I knew I knew uh how he was gonna go about yeah. that, that rematch. Um so yeah, it was great to see him preparing like that and you know, I knew uh, everything was covered going into that yeah, fight. He box burning. You, would you believe this is random, but I watched that fight in a bar with David Egg. <laughs> what? <laughs> David, That's crazy. Isn't that weird? David Egg was here doing a, a talk and I went and listened to it and after yeah. it, I just went into the, the bar next door to watch, watch the fight. <laughs> Is he a boxing fan? Uh, and then this, they said he's a big boxing really? fan. He's, I said, fucking, you can, can sit here. <laughs> <laughs> so me and him said, what's in the Eubank Williams or what do you call him? Uh, Smith. Smith. Yeah. Eubank Smith. Do you and have what, any, what a uh, performance. <laughs> you wanna, <laughs> Do you have any deep conversations was watching Nah, nah cause it went, it, it was like maybe three hours of, you know, like yeah. of the talk. Ah, okay. And so then he was, he was when he up. came in, I was like, Do you know what? Even though I had so many questions, yeah. I didn't want to be like, so oh, here, yeah, David, what about the fifth of <laughs> <just> gonna... <laughs> so so relax and you know, watch the boxing. It's just how Bear would just watch the new bank. Yeah. And, How'd you follow them, the like the ice ball fucking thing? Like, you know, the earth, the, he's, flat he's earth? A whole load of stuff. No, he's not a, they were ex not a flat earther. Who am I thinking of then? Um, or some probably similar, a similar name then? I don't know. I don't think he's a flat earther, nah, but I'm not sure. he's just like we're trying to expose the the secret societies that is running the world, but oh, right. maybe be a bit too much for the Whiskey and Weight podcast, you know. <laughs> I get it. But you're. Into your spirituality and that kind of stuff as well. What yeah. led you down that road? I think when I was eighteen, around eighteen, when I, you know, when I got into boxing and, um, you know, I kind of, uh, I was with, I was around uh, my cousin Seb a lot, and we were both kind of into the same things. Um, we we both had our kind of eyes open to, and him before me, but you know he. he we had our eyes open to the fact that everything isn't always, you know, as Hadn't it seems, seems or as you're yeah. told. And, and, um, we kind of went into that from the health perspective and, mm. you know, and, you know, seeing, uh, you know, big pharma or alternative, alternative medicine and, um, just kind of wanted to learn how to thrive and be the best versions yeah. of ourselves we could be. And, and that kind of opened our eyes to a lot of different stuff in terms of health and, and, um, yeah, just trying to trying to impact the world the best we can, which you know at the time was what are we putting in our how are we fuel in our bodies. If we if we want to change the world, you can only do change that by changing the, yeah, yourself. Yeah, and um, that's the kind of journey that we went into. And, and, yeah, and um, yeah, still the and then you're a vegan, and yeah. then were you? What was your dad like before? You, you um, went on before. The um, I think I, I, I it's it's hard to say, but I think because uh, you kind of forget what you ate yeah, before. Yeah, you've done it that long, but yeah. it wasn't like 
He wasn't a vegetarian. Or well, my parents anything. always say if there was a veggie option, I would always choose always the, veg, food, the veggie yeah. one. I can remember as a kid. Uh, so I think the vegan, you didn't choose the vegan life. The vegan life chose you. <laughs> chose me. It's there. It's uh, it's already in the DNA. Yeah. Um, but no, my mom cooked uh, some like liver or something, and I can remember thinking as a kid, liver like is that yeah. Where is that a liver yeah. like is that I was trying to think is it correlate is that actually a a liver yeah. like, is that the same thing, and uh, so I remember feeling a certain way about mm. that as a kid, um, so I think when I really came into the understanding of what I'm putting in my body, it, it made a lot of sense to me to, um, yeah, to kind of choose to thrive off of the, uh, the plant-based yeah, diet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever get a, like a craving sometimes for like a piece of chicken or a burger? Never. No, it, it just, it don't make sense. I mean, a burger is like, you can have a burger in, in a, like a, a bean burger, burger, or you, you can kind of get a bean the, burger. Get yeah, the fuck. Get the same out. feeling. You get a the same. bean burger. <laughs> fuck uh, off. Yeah, Give so, me a double bean burger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I can find you one that would uh, change the game for you. I, I remember years ago, and I was with my friend in London, and he's not even a vegan, but yeah. there was a, a vegan store at the corner of his road, yeah. and they were doing fried chicken vegan style yeah. and the queue was around the fucking yeah. road and I was like if you want fried chicken that much why don't you just go and get KFC or yeah, something yeah. like it's, it's the flavour it's not necessarily mm. the the meat like the it's the seasoning it's the you know it's it's all the spices that go into it and yeah. you yeah. know especially from you know Jamaican Caribbean culture yeah. it's well even before veganism was created because that was created you know, in the West, yeah. Um, you know, you have Itar Rastas that yeah. are plant based. That's what I've been know, saying way for back in ages ago. Like, and we spoke about this before as well. Like, you know, Rastafari was, you know, Rasta was sat in a trend, sat in a pace since the 60s, and there was getting vilified and all, they're all fucking weird. Mm. Not cutting your hair, not cutting your beard, eating plant based food, mm. one love movement. To now in this gener- in this time, 2023, accept everyone for who they are. Let's go vegan. Beards are facing, long hair is facing. And it's like, mm. you know, you guys are only just catching up now. <laughs> you know, yeah, I think people take different bits of culture and, and put it together at different times to kind of formulate <coughs> what they what they want to achieve at the time. But there's a long history in the Caribbean of like plant-based mm. diets, you know. So it's nothing new to them people and you know I think different people need different things and yeah. and um, you know so that's definitely something that's culturally been um, you know been been going on for a long yeah. time yeah definitely and it doesn't affect their training anyway or what like you know if you're trying to get hit your um, protein targets mm. and, and all that do you struggle with it no I think it's easy enough to do if you if you have the right protein sources, you know, I've partnered with a company from like 10 plus years ago uh, called Raw Sport who have a, a real clean uh, protein blend with other kind of superfoods and like mm. maca root, quinoa protein and um, like fermented pea protein. So it's a really good, solid, like complete uh, protein that's not just like a, a fad product. It's something yeah. that actually can, can make people healthier. So when you've got... Um, <clears throat> Go to things you can incorporate in your diet. Yeah. You know, you, you're not gonna lack anything. But I think it's important if anyone's doing the transition to to kind of educate themselves and yeah. make sure they have got healthful things going in. It's not yeah. about like cutting stuff out and just you know having uh, white carby foods yeah. like, and having no no uh, nutritional elements into their diet and the veg yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Is um cousin Chris is he a vegan or? No, he eats everything, but he, <laughs> but he, he eats everything, baby. Eats everything. <laughs> I think uh, burger and lobster is his favorite. Um, so um, yeah, he has a whole different, um, yeah, a whole different mindset towards food. But he well, he's always, always in great shape. Like he's always yeah, ripped. He's, but yeah, is that part shape. of genetics? Because Uncle Chrissy was always in great shape too. Yeah, I think well, naturally he's he's got them genetics, but I don't think he. He he, li- he lives the life in the way he, d- he doesn't really change what he eats. Right. Um, but at the same time, he'll like um, 
he'll have things in his kitchen that it's like say you've told him about like health a few health products yeah he kind of he might brush it off but you'll see thing, like hemp yeah. seeds in his kitchen and like the protein he's got my whole fucking flow <laughs> word for word bar for bar <laughs> you'll see like egg whites um and like the the burger and lobster, but then next to it you'll have like hemp seeds and yeah, uh, yeah. So he'll kind of he'll add all them things in, yeah. but not take out anything. Well, at least that shows that you came yeah. like getting through to him. Yeah, I think, he, I think I think he uh, it definitely registered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you said, uh, not that long ago, but um, you went at the spa with Chris when he was getting ready for the. You um Connor Brand. Yeah, so he was down in Brighton when so, he was preparing for oh, that. You, so, yeah. so you went down in the spa room. So that fight never happened. Yeah. But now Uncle Chris is saying he wants you to fight Connor Brand. How do you feel about that? Is that the fight? Did you plant that seed or was that Uncle Chris's idea? I think uh Uncle Chris just, just knew it made sense if it's the, if we're the same weight class. Yeah. Um he's very traditional and he knows, you know, the the um, you know the damage moving up and moving down oh, weight yeah, classes sure. can do. Uh, he knows it's not a game to be played with, so um, he 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 knows that's the the logical mm. uh, fight to be made. I always knew coming into boxing that you know we we're, were around similar weights anyway. Yeah. So I, I knew it was something you know on the cards at some point in time, and um, you know I think it's moving closer and closer to. Um, you know, to unfold. Getting out. That way. Is there any beef? Has there been any words exchange with you and Connor? Um, uh, no, there's, there's, there's been no kind of, you know, there's no ill feeling from my part. Um, but is it a prayer to stick um, for the Eubank family? But yeah. And I mean, the Ben family no, too? There was no ill feeling from senior to Ben. You know when they fought. Yeah, it was it was just he wanted what he had. He wanted the title. The, the, the lads there signal. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have some parliamentary procedure? <laughs> and that yeah. just became his land. Yeah, and the procedure will be parliamentary. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. That's uh, that's what happened on the night. So are you proved everybody wrong. Like for the uh, you back Ben, new new edition. Are you hoping to get that in 2024? Uh, like, w as we said, we, we'd like the fight next. Um, mm. But will it happen next? I'm not too you sure. don't know. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've just got to um, stay focused on what we're doing and, yeah. and continue to to make a statement in the ring with yeah. um, with the performances. That's what I've been and doing up to this point. Coming off your last fight, where they say you got 2.2 million views, Conor Ben obviously is a big draw um for the TV. You v him, that'll be pay per view surely. I think it's a massive fight. I think um the public would be in for for a treat, and um I think it's the logical fight if we're both at one four seven. That is the that's the fight to make. Yeah, definitely. Um, have you boxed on pay per view yet? Uh, not yet, not yet. Do you think that's that's the type of fight that would that would um definitely generate Yeah, definitely, TV. most definitely. Um do you think whether or not it's Connor Band next that with the numbers that you've done, you could be pay per view anyway? I think we can definitely build up to it. Um yeah, I think it it's all about what dance partner you have. I think that when it comes to pay per view. Um I don't know, you know, I haven't you know, Chris Senior could you know sell to the public because if you can remember i think it might have been 2017 when chris jr fought pay-per-view mm. and he fought for the ibo that the first the first time he, yeah. won, he won he fought the australian guy yeah and i actually went to that show yeah i was but you i went down to it yeah and um you know that was pay-per-view and i think it done good numbers but yeah. the uh Wembley, the arena was packed that was a yeah. sell it mm. and uh but the the opponent was kind of uh, unknown, or he wasn't a high profile mm -hmm. guy in the UK, but it was still able to to sell off the back of yeah of of who Chris Junior was. Yeah, I think if you have the storyline behind it, it's it's possible. But I think the you know they're big fights where you know, people people have a story from both sides of the opponent, mm. um, and there's there's more risk and 
uh, reward and ego on the line. Yeah. Um, you know, it definitely gets the, the public more excited. Definitely. Have you got anyone on, like, I'd say the Conor brand who... I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different options, so I'm actually you know excited to kind of sit down and see and see uh, you yeah. know where we're going next. Um, Speaking of storylines mm. and capturing the public's imagination, this weekend the feds they all have a wee bit of something behind it, mm. so we'll go through the feds one by one. I want to get your opinion. Who's a winner and what do you think um, the fight's going to be? So we'll start off with Sean McComb versus Sam Maxwell. Backstory there, the two lads, former gym mates, uh, plenty of sparring. Mm. I don't think there's any needle there, but, you know, obviously for both of them, they accept the fight. Sam was feeling that he was getting the better of the spars. Sean will feel like he was getting the better of the spars. So yeah. there's a lot of ego there. Um, and it's Ireland v England also. What way do you see that figure? I think the spars will kind of be irrelevant because the fight's different from a spa. Yeah. And um, you know, I think Sean's on a good a good run recently, so you know, you'd have to favour him in the fight. Yeah, okay. So Sean, uh next up, uh Kevin Adjago versus Troy Williamson. Now they had a, a Twitter back and forth and where Troy was accusing Kevin was knocking him back a fight. Kevin was saying that's bullshit. And then Eddie Hearn come out and put more like of a a thing on it saying he didn't say that Kevin knocked it back, but he was like kind of like making it out as if Kevin mm. didn't want to fight. So the next thing Kevin says, I'm here, I do want to fight. So now I feel like Kevin has a point to prove. Mm. Um and Troy obviously wanted the fight, so he, he can't ask for it and, and not win. So what way do you think that fight's going? I think it's hard to call. Um, it's a close fight and it's a good matchup. I think um, obviously Troy's got the experience, um, the work rate, the pressure, and um, you know, Keevan is uh, more inexperienced with um, maybe more of a skill set. Um, so. It's interesting, it could go either of two ways. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for that one. Um, hard to hard to call a winner. Just sitting on the fence. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, call one, just pick one. Uh, I think mm, I think Troy late or or oh. Keevan um Yeah, or Keevan uh in the first half of the fight. But I think okay. if, I think the longer it goes, the more favorite favorite is Troy. Williamson, yeah. yeah. And Troy's one of your boys as well. He's a plant-based athlete. Is he? Is yeah. he plant-based? I didn't know that. And he's in fucking great shape too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Good fitness on them too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, then next, the top of the bill, Mike O'Connor versus Jordan Gill. I know Mick's your boy. Um, do you have any relationship with Gill? Do you know no, him? No. no. Um, just, just from passing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Michael has said about... Gil, his his best friends with Lee Wood, his behaviour after Mick lost to Lee Wood, so mm. that really upset Mego. So he wants to put a hurt on Jordy Gill. Um, Gil obviously wants to replicate what his friend done. What way do you see this fit going? I think it's you know, it's a difference in levels. I mean, Michael's a whole different level to to Gil in my opinion. Um, and I think that'll show on the night. Mm. Um, you know, I think the rest of it's all, all the you know celebrating another man's win or whatever is all irrelevant. It's all you know. Can you fight? And on yeah. the night, I think Michael Conlon's going to show his level and and um, show people that he's going back to the top of the sport. And he's, you know, he's took himself away. <clears throat> to Miami and you know, taking on a whole Hell. a whole heap of changes, and um, you know it takes a lot. It takes a lot to go and do that and and um, you know add to your game, and that's what he's done. Yeah. I'm excited to to see how that. Uh, it's reflects more like having to spend all that time in Florida. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna get it. <laughs> no, well, you know, Paul he said. <laughs> A happy fighter is a dangerous fighter, yeah. and he can't get much more happier than being mm. in, you know, the tropics of 
Miami. Is yeah. he in Miami? It's Florida, definitely. But uh, yeah, he's been, so he's in he's in Miami, um, and um, he's enjoying training out there. Uh, Bas Barrao is out there with him as well in a different gym, but staying in the yeah. same <clears throat> place. So now Florida's he's, he's got so a beautiful good, setup. Yeah. Have you been upstairs? I'm going uh, as soon as I land from here. I'm flying out there. Um, so yeah. The train or just for holidays? Um, I'll do some fitness out there, keep fit, and. Um, but so you're going for holidays? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to a boxing holiday. I'm, I'm I'm going from one fight week to another. Why? Abbas is fighting. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah. So oh, he's yeah, fighting yeah. out there on on the eighth, I think. So. Um, I mean, why not friend? You go to all the, all the fights. Did these guys come to your fights? Listen, it's boxing family. You know? did, did they come to yours? Yeah, the better have I been hey. calling for the people they account. <laughs> I'm traveling all around the motherfucking I got, world. I got Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, um, so you make mm. you know obviously makes a friend of mine too. Mm. Um, and last but not least, our co-host, our boy Terum McKenna. I never said his name wrong. <laughs> do you know what? How long you known him for? <laughs> so 20 plus years, but do you know what? I was going to say Kid Scorpion and I went, Tyrone or Scorpion. Um, because, you know, the name comes from my, my grandfather. Yeah. When he always talks about boxing when he's back in Jamaica and always talks about this guy, Kid Scorpion. Kid Scorpion and this blah, 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 blah. And the first time Toron met him, he starts telling about Kid Scorpion. <laughs> and he throws out his eyes. He gets your new nickname now. You're a kid. That's why. Kid well, Scott. I'm trying to make it stick. Yeah. Throwing trying it to shake it off. I heard it before. <laughs> but yeah, we have Kid Scorpion. Hey. And he's fighting <laughs> Lewis Crocker. And, uh, you know, the Battle of Belfast. A lot of. There was no. There's no backstory really between mm. these two. You know, uh, they have, you know, a, a good relationship up until the fight was made. Um, now it's getting a wee bit spicy. Uh, what way do you see that going? It's a great fight. Um, you know, Mick said earlier, it's, it's, it's worthy of uh, a headliner um, yeah. over here. It's, they're both great fighters, uh, action, all action fighters, and they both come to fight every time. Um, it's an interesting one because Tyrone's got the experience um, and you know, Crocker's carries the power and uh you know the 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 game changer uh punch um but it hasn't fought at this, the same level that uh Tyrone's fought at mm. up to this point so i'm gonna watch that one as a fan and and um so who you picking yeah. sitting on a fancy game <laughs> uh it's uh, it's hard to call that's hard to call and that's why it's it's you know it's 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 got so much attention around it yeah. and that's why it does deserve to be a headline fight. Yeah, well, it's not so. <laughs> <laughs> but they have moved it to co. Uh, yeah, co main. Yeah. So they did have it one under. Yeah. And um, you know, they've realized throughout the fight week that yeah, that the, the interest. Yeah. And you know, it's up. a classic. You know, uh, you know, East v West. Even though mm. technically Lewis is from the surf, but it's like you know, yeah, just you know the clash clash of the clans yeah. so much. But great fight, but um. Like you say, Lewis, you know, phenomenal potential yeah. and, you know, um, great, has a big future in front of him, but hasn't, he's, he's jumping up from his nothing mm. to, you know, to yeah. the next level. Yeah. He's jumping up like five levels from where he's been in. Mm. Tyrone has a, Lewis is a big puncher, but Tyrone has a, a world-class chin yeah. and, we can say that with confidence because he's fought at the world class with world class punters yeah. and they can't get him out of So, you know. How do you see the fight playing out? So I see Tyrone winning all points. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Lewis probably will be hot, I think, for the first four. Again, it's what I think is one of them fights where the early part of the fight, you favour Lewis and the, and the yeah. longer the fight goes, you definitely Yeah, I think Tyrone will like, drag him into the yeah. deep water. But um, you know it's all all it's all uncharted territory for Lewis. Yeah. So I think it's the wrong fight for him at this time of his career, especially you know coming home to a big fight. You it's know, a massive, it's yeah. a massive, it's a massive fight, isn't it? So Harlem, before we leave you, we're gonna do a quick fire round, okay? So 
quick answers. Unless what there's something. Uh, no, no, this is silly, right? So here we go. <laughs> Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan? Bruce Lee, but that's hard. Bruce Lee, like Jackie Chan films, but Bruce Lee is in philosophy. Yeah, because Rush R is the yeah, greatest like, You can't beat the ever. Jackie Chan films, like. But the Bruce Lee <laughs> films are great. Yeah, but to watch, like, the Jackie Chan films, like. Yeah, you're laughing yeah, balls yeah. off at Jackie yeah, Chan yeah. movies. But Chum you're on watching. Come on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that one. Hey. <laughs> and have one right there. <laughs> and have one there. <laughs> have you ever been to America? Right, America. <laughs> <You wanna> go? <laughs> <laughs> um, and even Jackie there. Oh, slow Chris down, Tucker. baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, right. They're going Bruce Lee in, that's a fun. Jackie movies, Bruce yeah, is a... Yeah, as yeah, a, got, yeah. yeah. Um, Boxing or martial arts? Boxing. How's that? Uh, Floyd Mayweather or Sugar Ray Leonard? Sugar Ray. You were, were comparing it to Sugar Ray at the last fight in the comedy? Hey. Is you that know, your... Um, that's, that's a beautiful thing if that's the case. I don't know. Maybe I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely somebody was talking about you being Sugar Ray. I, I think, think uh, they did. I and think, you were uh, uh, wearing the white short. Compared, yeah, Barry yeah. Jones compared the, ja the jab and... Um, yeah, obviously the kit is inspired by by that era of boxing, and and I love watching. Yeah, Sugar, Sugar Ray. Ray. That star was the best, you know, yeah. to watch visually and very effective. Definitely, Floyd's style is not too bad either. But great, great style as <laughs> it's well. Effective He's enough. The defensive master. <laughs> um, so noodles or rice? Noodles. Noodles. Uh, rap or R and B? Uh, R&B okay. Tupac or Brady Tupac Wally or Dizzy Wally Okay uh, Fish and chips or rice and peas <laughs> Rice and peas <laughs> The fish and chips is a Brayden. Is a Brayden boy. Right, I'm like, I don't know how vegan it is. <laughs> what can kind of vegan get adding in the tippy? Just the chips. chips. <laughs> peas and chips and, and uh, mushy, mushy peas. peas. <laughs> uh, no thanks. Um, Jamie or Mick? Can't. It's a Mick fight week, man. We've got to go and Mick. Okay. Um, and last but not least, Chris Senior or Chris Junior? Listen, <laughs> you can't throw me, you can't throw me like that. Um, I mean, senior of his era, and you know, Chris is a joy to watch in this era. But you know, in terms of, they're, they're both inspired me in the sport. I can't pick. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harlem, thanks very much for coming on the show, folks. Make sure you tune in Saturday night. Tyrone McCann versus Lewis Crager, Battle of Belfast. You know, Mick Collins, Headlander, Jordan Gill, Sean McCall, Maxwell, Kevin, and Williamson. But here's the Whiskey and White Show. So we got to support our white boy, Wade Tyrone, Kid Scorpion. And uh, we're here with Harlem. He done a bit on the Patreon as well yesterday. So make sure you get on the Patreon. It's two pound a month. And make sure you get down to the Garrick bar in the town because you know we're in partnership with the Garrick. So thanks for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. And we're out. <laughs>